hello viewers uh, welcome to my channel uh, today's topic is uh, social anxiety disorder uh, but before starting this topic i would like to request you to like subscribe and share these videos and if you need more information about any disease or any medical condition in that case you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com you know and uh, uh, you can click the link in the description area just below this video to visit the website and uh, uh, to subscribe there is a button below this video as well now i come to the topic what is social anxiety disorder you know you know the social anxiety disorder uh, sometimes uh, it's also referred as a social phobia you know uh, which is a a type of anxiety disorder uh, that causes extreme fear in social settings you know and the people with this disorder have trouble uh, talking to people uh, meeting new people and uh, attending the social gatherings or social events you know and uh, they fear being judged or like uh, scrutinized by others you know and they may understand that their fears are irrational or uh, unreasonable you know but feel powerless to overcome these uh, fears you know and uh, social anxiety disorder is different from the shyness you know shyness is usually short term and doesn't uh, uh, disrupt one's life you know uh, but social anxiety uh, is persistent and uh, debilitating you know it can affect your ability to work at uh, school or maybe um, and develop the close relationship with the people outside of their family you know and uh, the symptoms uh, uh, may start uh, around the age of like 13 you know and uh, uh, which may include uh, like blushing or maybe nausea or maybe uh, like when they are social acting, you know, when they are in the gatherings, that may cause them nausea, vomiting, excessive sweating, or fear, or uh, difficulty in speaking, you know, dizziness, or lightheadedness, you know, or maybe rapid heart rate, you know. And uh, uh, psychological symptoms may include like worrying intensely about the social situation, you know, or maybe worrying for the days or weeks before an event, you know, avoiding the social situations or trying to blend into the background if you must and you know and worrying about the uh, embarrassing yourself in social situations or worrying that other people will notice you that you are stressed or you are nervous you know and uh, like i was saying that uh, uh, um, it's normal uh, to sometimes feel anxious you know uh, but when you have the social phobia you have constant fear of being judged you know and uh, uh, being humiliated in front of them you know so you may avoid the social situation in that case, including like uh, maybe asking a question or shopping or job interviews or like uh, using the public restrooms you are eating in public, you know, talking on the phone, you know. And the symptoms of the social anxiety may not occur uh, in all situations, you know. And uh, you can have limited or selective anxiety. Uh, so what does it mean is that the symptoms, uh, for example, the uh, symptoms may occur when you are eating in front of the people or talking to the strangers, you know. And the symptoms can occur in uh, all social settings if you have an extreme case, you know. The next thing is what are the causes, you know. The exact cause of the social phobia or the social anxiety disorder uh, is unknown. So you don't know oh, the right uh, or the exact reasons, you know. Uh, but... Uh, the, the research supports the idea that it's caused by combination of uh, environmental factors and uh, genetics, you know. And the negative experiences also may contribute to the disorder, which may include like bullying or like family conflict or uh, sexual abuse, you know. And the physical abnormalities such as uh, uh, serotonin imbalance uh, can contribute to this condition, you know. And you know the serotonin, uh, it is a, it is a chemical, you know. And uh, in the brain, you know, and uh, it regulates the mood. 
and then overactive uh, like uh, IGDEL or RH, which is a uh, like uh, uh, so amygdala is uh, like uh, is a structure in the brain you know and its function is that uh, it controls the fear response you know and uh, feelings or maybe thoughts of anxiety you know and uh, uh, if it is overactivated, it may cause these uh, uh, dis social anxiety disorder, you know. And the uh, anxiety disorders can run in families, and uh, but the scientists are not sure if they are actually linked to the genetic factors, you know. And uh, for example, a child might develop an anxiety disorder by learning the behavior of one of their parents, you know. Um, who has an anxiety disorder and the children can also develop anxiety disorder as a result of uh, being raised in uh, controlling and uh, like overprotective environment you know so these uh, the, the, there's another contributing factor you know uh, well there is no a medical test which is used to check the social anxiety or to diagnose the social anxiety disorder you know and your doctor will as I saying, uh, there is no specific test, you know, but uh, uh, your doctor will diagnose by the symptoms, you know, he will ask you the questions, you know, and uh, during your appointment, your healthcare provider will ask you, explain your symptoms, and uh, they will ask uh, uh, about, uh, you to talk about the situations that can cause the anxiety, you know, or the symptoms, you know, and the criteria for the social anxiety disorder includes like the constant fear for social situations due to fear of uh, humiliation or embarrassment, you know, and feeling anxious or uh, panic before the social interaction, you know, or maybe realizing that your fears are unreasonable or anxiety that uh, uh, disrupts the daily living, you know, like uh, your performance at the work or school or uh, uh, anywhere, you know, in the, in the public, you know. And then what once diagnosed, then what are the treatment options? Well, there are several treatments are available for the social anxiety disorder and uh, treatment results uh, differ from the person to person, you know. And some people only need uh, one type of treatment while the other may need uh, a combination of treatments, you know. And your doctor may refer uh, to a psychologist or psychiatrist, you know. And sometimes primary care uh, a doctor may suggest medications to treat the symptoms, you know. And the treatment options uh, include like cognitive behavioral therapy or maybe exposure therapy or group therapy and maybe avoiding caffeine and getting plenty of sleep and uh, you know so and uh, then the, uh, maybe the medications you know so there may be a combination of uh, like uh, uh, maybe uh, behavioral therapy combined with the medications you know so or the group therapy and uh, behavioral therapy and medications, you know. So it depends, uh, it varies person to person, you know, and your doctor will be the best person to decide which one is the most suitable treatment option for you, you know. So he will uh, have a treatment plan uh, which will be tailored especially for you. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you need more information, you can visit my website which is www.diseasesandtreatment.com. Thank you. Goodbye.